It's so sad. We're ending our Inside Out series. It's been a wonderful, wonderful time of vulnerability, of honesty, of looking beneath the surface, of looking inwardly, of getting to emotional health. And today, with our last sermon, our last message, we get to be ministered by our very own lead pastor, Pastor Phil, and his beautiful wife, Jamila. You guys, so good. Tune in, lean in, take out all the distractions, take your notebooks out, and let's be ministered today in honesty, in, in faithfulness, in integrity. Pastor Phil, Sister Jamila, take it away. Inspire Church family, welcome. <laughs> we got a little surprise for you today. Actually, today is bittersweet. And the reason why it's bitter is because, actually, it's been really good. We've been going through this sermon series called Inside Out on the Emotionally Healthy Church by Pete Scazzaro. If you haven't got this book yet, you need to go and check it out. You need to circle back and check yeah. out some of the previous messages on YouTube. But it's bitter because... We're at the end of this book. Right. Uh, we've gone through almost 200 pages, uh, six principles. Today is principle number seven, mm. and we are coming to the end. This is our last episode of Inside Out, and I got to be honest, this book has been like wrecking me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it has been challenging me. It has been challenging the church. I'm super excited. We've had over 20 plus uh, uh, book clubs, That's over 130 awesome. people in book clubs. Like I know people are never the same. This church will never be the same uh, because of this series and this book and really what the Holy Spirit is doing in it. Right. Um, but it's bitter because today's the last principle. Today's the last day. Right. But it's sweet. Mm. I haven't had a chance to introduce who my lovely <laughs> guest is, but it's sweet because I'm doing this with my wife, Jamila. <laughs> And most of y'all know who Jamila is, but for those of you who don't, just kind of maybe introduce yourself and just say a little something. Yeah, <laughs> I am Jamila Mosi. That okay. is my full first name, my government name. <laughs> and um, I mean, you know me. I'm your, I'm your sister. I'm uh, Philip's lovely wife. Yes, lovely. The for amazing sure. Philip Mwella. <laughs> um, P3's amazing mom and just. Um, a lover of Jesus. I love how you just called yourself P3's amazing mom. I had to do it. <laughs> and so I'm, I was actually thinking about this. Are you nervous, by the way? Yeah. yeah. Like a lot or a little bit? I'm a lot nervous. <laughs> I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth. I have stuff written down that I might not even say. So, yeah. <laughs> That's like a funny, I'm a little scared too, to be honest. But what's good is I was actually thinking about this. We have been married for six years. We got it right. We church planted five years ago. Mm. How long have we been in ministry together, though? I mean, we were in ministry in engagement. Yeah, we were yeah. friends in ministry. I mean, what would you say? I'm going to say probably 15, 14, 15 years. Man, yeah, we've been we've been everywhere. We've been on the road together. Yeah, dude, we were at a worship. We yeah, we were singing on the stages, traveling the world. <laughs> and that's and that's a that's another podcast. Yeah, that's a whole another one. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, I guess what's really exciting is I don't think I have ever sat with you like this in a setting like this, sharing our hearts and ministering together like this. And so this is bitter because it's our last episode, but it's super sweet because right. this is actually new for us. Right. And, um, right. and so... And the work continues after this, let me tell you. Yeah, no, it continues yeah. to move forward beyond just this sermon series. And so, as you can see, we're at the table together. It's not a red table. No. But some of y'all might be familiar with, uh, you know, the, the Will and Jada. Uh, this is the Phil and Jamila, uh, not red table, not but red table, not, not red Will and at all. Jada table. <laughs> it's Phil and Jamila. Yeah. But what we want to do is we want to be real with you guys today. We want to be honest. Um, I think a lot of times we see people on stage talking about their successes, and mm -hmm. I want to talk about our successes, but I want to be real with everyone today, and I want to be honest about our failures. So if you don't like pastors, 
sharing their failures, <laughs> you may not want to stay at Inspire <laughs> after this because uh, we're just going to put our pastor hat down, our leadership hat down. And I think our prayer, and we've been praying, and we're nervous about this, our prayer is that the Holy Spirit would use our successes, but especially he would use our failures today right. as, um, as we talk about slowing down mm. uh, to love Jesus and to lead well to yeah. live well, to lead with integrity. Yeah. And so we want to invite you to come along this ride with us. Mm -hmm. We're going to be honest and vulnerable today. Uh, we have definitely not made it, right? Most definitely we not. It. We have a long We're ways to go. We're just at the beginning. This is yeah. like the first quarter. <laughs> we have a long ways to go. But uh, with that being said, before we jump into this, babe, I'm going to ask you to pray. Would you pray for us, you and me? Yeah. Uh, as we share our vulnerability in front of a lot of people. But would you also pray that those watching today would be touched by something that we share yeah. and that God would do uh, his work in you and me yeah. and in all of us watching today. So, babe, would you pray us in and then we'll, we'll get started. Most definitely. Father, we want to thank you right now. We acknowledge your presence. You are so, so good. I've seen your faithfulness from the beginning to this very moment, and I just want to thank you. Father, I thank you for all that you have revealed during um, this time of going through this book, what you started before and what you're going to do later. I just ask for your grace, your continued uh, presence, and I ask for your blessing, God, your blessing over everyone who will hear this. Uh, your blessing over everyone who this book is rocking and stretching. And we just ask for your will to be done. We invite you into this process. We ask that you would have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, let's shake, shake that nervousness. I know. Let's I want to go walk around the room a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> so the end goal of this chapter is to, is to lead with integrity. Like that's the goal. Mm -hmm. The goal is to be to live with integrity, to lead, whether you're a husband or a wife and you're leading your family, your children, right. leading one another, mm -hmm. whether you're in your career, you're a ministry, pastors, right. leaders. But the end game is to lead with integrity. Yeah. The end game is to love Jesus. Yeah. Which is exciting. No, and that's exciting. In fact, that's what I want to talk about. Yeah. But, and it's, you know, this big but, which is kind of awkward to say. Yeah, it is. But, <laughs> but, um, before you can even get there, there's this intimidating phrase yeah. Pete Scazzaro uses. He says, slow down. Yeah. Who wants says, to do that? Slow down. And yeah. that is so difficult, especially yeah. in our culture. I know it's difficult for you and me, and we'll talk about that. Right. I'm sure everyone watching, it's difficult. We don't slow down well. Uh, um, I mean, if you think about it, we live in the Bay Area, so we're working nonstop just to bring a paycheck in. And then if we want to have some sort of fun... Yeah. Uh, we're working overtime. Like I, th I feel like there are many people watching that now. Overtime is it, overtime used to be like something you rarely do. Right. I feel like overtime now is a part of people's lives. Right. But Especially like, for people working from home. I right. mean, it oh, used gosh. to be like you go to work and then you come home. Now right. your work is at home. Absolutely. So where does it where stop? does it stop? <laughs> right. And then and then there is everything else that comes with it. Yeah. And then when you finally do get a break, there's birthdays, baby showers, cousins, the family parties. Ones. Yeah. There's all these events. Our calendars are yeah. filled up. In fact, we're a culture that doesn't slow down we're so tired that we go on vacation and come home and we're more tired yeah. coming home from a vacation yeah. than than actually before we went to a vacation yeah that's true and and i, I just love the phrase that pete scazzaro we have to be honest we are a culture that is addicted to activity right and i don't know you know you did a quick comment just on what i just right, said but right, right. that addicted to activity is such a I, I think it's such a true indictment yeah of you and me yeah and i think a lot of people who are watching right now would agree yeah yeah definitely our culture it's the culture that doesn't want to stop doesn't want to slow down you always have alerts on your phone right. there's always stuff going on right. your emails right. um and it's just like that in the church, right? right? Yeah, totally. And, and it's so crazy because we make up like, well, we can't do this because we're too busy. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's something about busy that we actually do on purpose. Like yeah. we act like we're busy and we can't control it, mm -hmm. but we can. 
the yeah. reality is, is I think we're afraid to slow down. Right. Because if we slow down, then who are we? Then right. what are we going to do? So right. here's what I want to do. I want to, I'm going to read a quote from the book. <laughs> okay. And then for everyone who's watching and for you, babe, I want you to just pick out a phrase, a word or two that just kind of sticks out to you okay. and just kind of maybe feels like, man, that's me. That's me. Okay. And so uh, uh, the, the quote says this, many of us are overscheduled, yeah. tense, like we are right now, <laughs> addicted <laughs> to hurry, frantic, preoccupied, mm -hmm. fatigued, yeah. and starved for time. I'm gonna say yeah. that again. Many of us are overscheduled, right. tense, addicted to hurry, frantic, preoccupied, fatigued, and starved for time. And of all of those, like what, which ones pop out to you? I can honestly say that every single word you read <laughs> right, is me. Right, every word, every part, right. <laughs> all of them pop out at me, and all of them convict me. But most definitely preoccupied and fatigued mm. are, I think, those two carry the most weight in provoking a response in me. So, so when, okay, so when I say preoccupied, like, just break that down really quickly. What's preoccupied to Jamila so Mosi? To me, Jamila Mosi. <laughs> um, so preoccupied is when you're so consumed with other things. You're so right. um, scheduled, overscheduled. You have all these duties that you need to get done in a day. You have this agenda that you need right. to fulfill. Right. You're so consumed with that, that the people that are closest to you, you aren't present for. Wow. Your mind is elsewhere. Your energy mm. is elsewhere. Right. So, so for good. me, when I think of preoccupied, right. that's how it's played out in my life. Right. That's so good. In fact, there's like a podcast, Craig Grishel, I believe it is, and he said something that's always stuck with me. He says, sometimes, well, many times we prioritize the urgent over the importance yeah, that's true. so preoccupation is this whole idea that there are so many things that need to get done the yeah. urgent things that are in our face in front of us yeah. and when we're preoccupied with the urgent things we actually never accomplish the important things that's true. super crazy mind-blowing okay you also said fatigued yeah and as your husband i'm thinking man what does that i mean do you want to just hibernate i mean what does that mean like you <laughs> you feel like you need to take a long nap i mean yeah just just kind of break that fatigue down for me just really quickly so that's tired <laughs> so tired. Fatigue just means tired tired and wow. i'm talking you know especially in this season mm. Yeah. I'm talking mentally tired, emotionally tired, spiritually right. tired, just tired, fatigued, you wow. know? It's something that a nap won't cure. Mm -hmm. um, so good. You know, it's not only you overscheduled, but you're just overwhelmed. Um, wow. We're like, we are overstimulated mm -hmm. even. Right. And so, yeah, fatigued, you know, just holistically tired. Yeah. Wow, that's heavy. I want to like pause right now and just like, take a nap. And but like you said, I mean, not even a vacation mm. heals this. Yeah. Right? And that's kind of that's so deep. So preoccupied and fatigued, babe. Will you do me a favor? Would you yeah. just let's get a little personal? Okay. Um, unpack that for me. Mm -hmm. What that means to you right now, and for mm -hmm. those that are listening, mm -hmm. um, yeah, unpack that for me. Yeah, most definitely, um, Peter. Peter Scazzaro. Scazzaro. Yeah. You know, it's hard for me to say yeah, his name. It's okay. Um, he has been impactful for giving me words for emotions, so giving good. me understanding for the why behind mm -hmm. the things that I've done, especially in ministry. Yeah. You know, I had the revelation that, you know, I've walked in this, this mental script that said that, you know, and it, it, it wasn't wrong, but it's that, you know, time belongs to God, that people are his agenda, which is a noble, right. true statement. What, so before you go, you said you walk in a negative script. Now, script, I know there are yeah. some people watching right now. What, what do you mean by a negative script? Like, what is that? A like, script. define what a script is. You walking with a script. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's what you say to yourself over and over again. It's like mm. a recording that you play, right. you know, w when you're triggered. It's the mantra that goes on behind the scenes that motivates your actions, right, right. Um, your decision making. Right. That's so, what I mean when I say Right, so not even when you're triggered, it's just literally this script it's that is playing. It's almost like a voice in your head that is really dictating your behavior yeah. throughout the day. And so for yours, it is, say that one more time. What's that script <laughs> that you were saying? So 
Time belongs to the Lord. Time belongs to the Lord. And people. And people are his agenda. Are his agenda. Like, okay, tell, what now, does that mean? As I say that, you know, you hear it. It's true. Right. Time right. belongs to the Lord. Right. People are his agenda. Right. But my rigid understanding of that, and and really my understanding is based out of past dishealth. Right. You know? And so for me, that meant you never say no. You take on whatever causes before you, whatever right. needs, because right. there's always need. Right. Somebody always you needs something. You always take it on. Especially in ministry. Oh, I mean, I know there's yeah. people watching, but especially in ministry, like yeah. there's always a need that needs to be felt. Right. There's, and there's always people in need because it's right. not just a need. It's a person right. that's attached to it. Right. And right. so there's this desire to save, to help, yeah. to, you know, to come alongside. Yeah. But ultimately what ends up happening is that you leave no time for you. You, what do you mean by that? You. Um, if you're always other focused, right. you never take care of yourself. home, whether yeah. home is yourself or home is even your marriage. You know, oh. how often, you know, it, and it's, it's hard to even say it, it's how often did you get the leftovers? How right. often did you get the, the, the least of me? Mm -hmm. You know, the best of my energy, the best of my attitude, the best of my passion, the best of my presence. Right. It's been given out to other people because right. their need right. was was urgent. Right. And the reality is that, you know, walking in that month after yeah. month, year after year has robbed from our marriage wow. unknowingly, right. unknowingly. Yeah. Um, it, it wasn't an intentional desire to to not give you who I am. Yeah. It really was a byproduct of me thinking I was doing what was noble right. and necessary. Right, and you know, I'm thinking about this um, as you're talking about this. First of all, for anybody who's watching, it doesn't have to be ministry. It could be working overtime. Right. It could be all these things you're preoccupied with. Right. You're so busy. You're ambitious. And then at home, you know, and I, and I really want to say this, I have, I have felt that. I know when as there are marriages that are watching here, husbands and wives watching, and probably feel that way. They feel neglected. Yeah. Uh, they feel frustrated internally, but nobody's saying, right? We're all, we're all thinking these things inside, but no one's saying nothing. Yes. And you go weeks, you go months, and your spouse is not giving you their best. And, and I do remember that. I do remember, and I do still, yeah. you know, it's not like, oh, we're complete, but Have sitting on the- Have I gotten better? <laughs> huh? Have I gotten better? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think awareness- You want to be that authentic? I know. So, <laughs> I think self-awareness is important, but I, yeah. I want to be honest now. Yeah. I want to be honest. Yeah. Uh, as whether your husband or wife or whoever, that you do feel the neglect and it does yeah. create tension in the marriage and frustration. Yeah. And, uh, and I, what's interesting about you and I, babe, is that we're a match made in heaven in so many ways, yeah, yeah, yeah. but also our weaknesses, we tend to put everything before us. Right. Um, yeah. But before I move into kind of what stuck out for me, there, there was a, a quote that you wanted to read that really was impactful to you and then yes. i'm just going to share what yeah. stuck out for you why don't you go ahead and okay um so pete says for marriage involves nothing more than a lifelong commitment to love just one person <laughs> to do whatever else one does a good thorough job of loving one person that is devastating. I'm going to read it one more time because I feel like, you know, for people like me, I got to hear it two times, three times, four times. For marriage involves nothing more than a lifelong commitment to love just one person, to do whatever else one does, a good, thorough job mm. of loving one person. And I remember when I read that, I was thinking, you know, you had one job and you totally <laughs> failed. You love me well, babe. Yeah. You do. You do. But I, 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 yeah, I feel like I wanted to say that. Yeah. But um, thank you for this honesty, because I know we can easily <clears throat> sit up here and act like, well, you know, we're good. Our marriage is great and stuff. But this is real. Um, and so I appreciate that that st stands out to you. Yeah. I think when I, I was thinking about all of those adjectives to describe busyness and um, for me, actually fatigued just recently, literally. <laughs> I mean, actually this has been a revelation during the reading of this book this mm -hmm. year. 
this mm-hmm. last couple of weeks. Yeah. And I realized that I'm more tired than I think. Mm-hmm. And that I don't even know when I'm tired. In fact, I do a terrible job of listening to my body. Yeah. And so there are times where I'm running on fumes yeah. and I really don't even know it. Yeah. You really don't stop. You are amazing. You're tireless. Right. And you're you know, and I, and I know you're complimenting me, but amazing that, you know, that's probably, you know, yeah. That might not even be, you know, that's yeah. actually probably not a good thing. Yeah. And I know, you, you know, you're saying, yeah. I, I appreciate right. what you're saying, but even there, there's a script that, hey, the harder you work, right. the more you're busy, right. you're the best, you're amazing or whatnot. But the reality is, is you could actually really harm. And right. I think this is where you and I do, we clash in mm-hmm. our marriage, if we're being honest. Mm-hmm. Um, so clash so, in what but, way? You well, say clash, yeah, what do you fatigue, mean by that? I know you got, I'll show I'll tell you, but yeah, fatigue yeah, you tell me what's up. and uh, overscheduled. Mm-hmm was the other phrase that stuck out to me. And here's what I realized about me. Uh, Career, ministry, leadership, vision, meetings, events. Uh, um, I love to get busy. I fill up my schedule so much. Um, And what ends up happening is when I fill up my schedule with work, with ministry, with events, uh, um, something suffers. Mm -hmm. And I realize, and this is really big, in busying up my schedule, I impoverish my relationship with Jesus and my relationship with you. Yeah. And that's why I said, and sometimes our marriage can be a perfect storm because you, you, you're focusing on everything else and neglecting me. Mm-hmm. And I got my schedule piled up and I'm impoverishing you. Mm-hmm. And we've gone not just weeks, months, even a year or more yeah. living in that place. And I got to tell a story right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's going to be, this is probably, for me at least, mm-hmm. one of the lowest places that you and I have been in our marriage. So you may agree, you may disagree, but. <laughs> it's not even funny. It's but like, we're, I know we're you both like the black, nervous giggling. giggle. Um, <laughs> But I remember, and this is, a, this is two years ago, I don't say that to say, hey, we're far removed from, like, we still get in fights, say, but this in particular has stood with me maybe two years ago. Yeah. Um, and again, I, I don't say this because, you know, two, that was a long time ago. Like, we still wrestle with this, but this was a, this was a low moment, lowest moment in our marriage for me. Yeah, um, definitely. We were at Baskin Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> All I have to say is Baskin Robbins, and I'm probably sure you know yeah. everything I'm about to say. Yeah. It was a Sunday afternoon. You know, you, me, and P going to get ice cream. It's supposed to be a nice, you know, family moment. Right. And I remember being in Baskin Robbins. I don't remember the conversation. I don't remember exactly what it was. And I, I, you probably do better than me because, you know, as guys, sometimes we just like to, you know, forget it and move on. But I know that I, in the midst of that, I responded to you in a hard, harsh disrespectful uh cold way Mm. which by the way that's who i am when i'm disconnected Mm -hmm. like when i'm not spending time with jesus when my schedule is full of busyness but i'm not making time to be with jesus and i'm disconnected with you Mm -hmm. there's no connection no heart connection between you and me and it's that is who i am i become hard i become harsh i become and I'm not even making an excuse for this, but I'm starting to realize that those are symptoms of heart problems. Yeah. And in that moment, I made a comment, responded, and I'll never forget because you don't cry. You're not a crier. Happy, sad, you don't cry. And we're in Baskin Robbins and my wife is tearing up and yeah. starting to cry. Now. I'm going to give you a moment to speak into this because this is deep, but this wasn't like, oh, you know, she's so sad. I looked at your tears and these were tears of like deep anger, like deep, deep resentment. Yeah. And it's, and it shocked me to my core. And I'm going to give you a moment just to speak (laughs) into that because that was heavy. Yeah, that was, I don't think I've ever really allowed myself to get that mad. And, and, and. I don't think I could actually say aloud. It was like such an upwelling of anger that I couldn't even control it. And mm. I'm a, you know, I'm a pacifist. 
you know, I'm not the, you know, I'm not this emotional person, you know, I feel stuff and I just push it down because right. there's stuff that needs to get taken right. care of, right. <laughs> which isn't healthy. Right. <laughs> I right. wanted to say that's not healthy. Yeah. Um, and you're getting, you've got much better. Like you, yes. you know, but yes, yes. And you've been a big part of that, but I, I can say in that moment, God ripped off the bandaid and it was just blood yeah. gushing everywhere. And I was so angry and I was not consolable. There's yeah. nothing you could have said right. to calm me down. Right. And I, w and I was going to say that Baskin Robbins is five minutes from our house. We right. live in Dublin. Right. And I knew that there was no way we were going to solve this on our own. We did not have the tools to get through that moment. Right. So I right. remember... Right. Getting my phone out and texting Sherry and Junior. Right. Junior is somewhere here on set. <laughs> Shout out to Junior and Sherry Martinez. Right. Sherry has been counseling us mm -hmm. pre-marriage, mm -hmm. in marriage. Mm -hmm. And I remember texting her saying, There's, I don't know what you're doing right now. It's Sunday. It's like 4 p.m. But you and Junior need to get home right now. You have no choice because Jamila and I have just hit this. <laughs> we really hit rock bottom. And, and we got in the car, instead of driving back home five minutes away, I got on the freeway, I didn't even tell Jamila, and we made, and couples that are out there, you know that awkward drive, we made that awkward drive back to San Lorenzo, mm -hmm. thank God for Sherry and Junior, and we went into their home, and it feels like we spent eight hours there. I think we spent about three hours, yeah. bitter, tears, yeah. anger, um, and mm. only to realize, only to realize that it wasn't even just one moment. Yes, mm -hmm. what I said was mm -hmm. wrong, and, yeah. but you and I were full of moments of frustration and disappointment with each other, and we were holding it all, all in. And it wasn't just that moment that it was over a year's worth of literally almost being roommates mm -hmm. in a house because you and me are missing each other. Right. Not just for a day, not just for a week, for over a year, and nobody is saying anything. Right. We don't know how to slow down. Right. I'm not in loving union with Jesus. I'm disconnected with you. Mm -hmm. And so the way that I love you and lead you and the way that you love and lead me, integrity in that just went out the window. Yeah. And, and it's really interesting because it's paralleled my relationship with Jesus. Like, I love you. Like, I love you. Like, there, divorce is not an option. Yeah. Not even throwing that word around. Like, I'm never going to leave you. Uh, I love Jesus. I'm not leaving Jesus. Right. But yet, you can love and be com think you're committed mm -hmm. and think that's enough, but yet miss each other. Disconnect. Right. Right. Be right. distant. Be cold. Right. And, and all because of why? The schedule the busyness, all of the things that we're doing, um, we're missing, I'm missing my time with Jesus. Mm -hmm. When I'm with Jesus, I'm a humbler person. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm disconnected with you, and I'm angry at you, I don't even know it. And I'm filling up my busy schedule outside of the home because I feel like I'm getting more affirmation there. And you are, I mean, there's just so much we even, I mean, we, we'd probably spend another 30 minutes on this podcast. On right. this, Podcast, whatever we call in this. Yeah. But here's what I do know. We bypassed slowing down. Mm -hmm. I bypassed loving Jesus and my integrity as a husband it was destroyed, not just in that moment, but in a lot of moments. And here we are, our marriage is a wreck. And we're supposed to be pastors and leaders at a church. Right. Like we're supposed to have a great marriage, right? Right. Right. And here we are. And I just, um, uh, I want to say this. Uh, Pete Scazzaro says this. I want to move on to the second mm -hmm. section. Uh, when, he, when it comes to marriage, Pete is reflecting on Ephesians chapter 5. He says this. Our marriage union is to be a picture, an experience of receiving and giving the love of God. Like our marriage is supposed to be a reflection of receiving God's love and giving God's love away. Right. Yet, 
Here we are, here I am, uh, uh, preoccupied, fatigued, uh, uh, frustrated, uh, over busy, where I'm too busy to receive God's love. Uh, and if I'm not receiving God's love, then guess what? I'm not giving his love away to you. Right. And so if I'm not getting the love of God, then I'm certainly not giving it back to you. I'm giving you something contaminated. I'm giving you something that is uh, disingenuine. I'm giving you something that is hurtful and right. harmful. And, and, and as a result, because I'm not spending time with Jesus, because I'm not slowing down, mm -hmm. everything and everyone suffers. Yeah. And here we are a year later, wounded, yeah. exploding. And it all started with preoccupation, overscheduling, right. disconnection. Right. Um, and, and not even in that slowing down for that loving union with Christ, that would even give time for him to show the dysfunction that was yeah. working underneath. Right. I mean, between right. us both, there's a lot of this health and just yeah. how we even viewed right. our marriage. Right. So, so here's the big thing. So why do we slow down? So let, I mean, we spend, we could spend a lot of time really on slow down. Why yeah. do we slow down? I mean, the, what's the point of slowing down? Like we slow down to love Jesus, right? We slow down for loving union. We slow down so that Jesus becomes our priority. Right. Uh, uh, and, and I'm no good as a husband. I'm no good as a father uh, if I'm not in loving union with Jesus. And so what I want to do right now is I want to talk about loving union with Jesus. Okay, we slow, okay. Okay, I want to slow down, but now what? What's yeah. next? And so what does it mean to be in loving union? I actually want to read from the scriptures okay. uh, in John chapter 15, okay. verses 4 through 5. Uh, and if you have it, you could follow along with us. But John chapter 15, verse 4 through 5, listen to the words of Jesus. He says, abide in me. I love that word abide. It means to live and dwell and remain. So Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. And now pay attention to this. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Mm, that's so powerful. Right, nothing. And this isn't just about ministry. People are watching, oh, they're the pastors and leaders. They're just talking about ministry. No, no, no. Jesus says, apart from me, you can do not just ministry. You can't do nothing right. Like when you're not abiding with Christ, when you're not dwelling with him, when you're not making room to be with him, you're, you're dysfunctional. You're, you're functioning in a dysfunctional way in everything you do. You can't father right. You can't husband right. You can't mother right, wife right. You can't be in your job and lead well. All of these things get wrecked. When you're not making time to abide. So, babe, do me a favor. Just why don't you share with us mm -hmm. what abiding looks like and maybe your successes or your struggles mm -hmm. just with this idea of not just making time, but once I'm slowing down, but also spending time with Jesus. Yeah. Just talk about that for a second. Yeah. So uh, there's actually another quote from this chapter that has to do with abiding that I wanted to share. Um, it says, work for God that is not nourished by a deep interior life with God will eventually be contaminated. Right. Wow. Our experiential sense of worth and validation gradually shifts from God's love for us in Christ to our works and performance. Man, that's heavy. I mean, right? We're talking about malnourishment. We're talking mm -hmm. about contamination. We're talking about a lack of joy. We're talking yeah. about performing and working right. so deep. Right, right. In fact, I think I cut you off. There's that last, there's that last mm -hmm. line there. Sorry, I just okay. so, it's the joy of life, right? Uh -huh. The joy of life with Christ slowly and almost imperceptibly disappears. Wow. And I think that's the testimony of many people in Christ, right? Where they're so busy doing but they're not nourishing that inner life that the their work becomes contaminated mm. it becomes bitter filled right there's resentment right um right. there's no joy in their serve um wow and their life with christ you know even their their, their struggle to have prayer time mm. is dry yeah. and unproductive right. and it's it's crazy because it's people in careers but even pastors leaders right. people like right now are watching you do ministry and work you could be doing all the work of ministry right. but be completely disconnected from jesus right, right? and he, he even right. says depart I never knew you. I said, like, wait a minute, I did this for you, that right. for you. He said, no, I didn't have an intimate reality with you. How scary is uh, yeah, that? Yeah, unpack that, baby. I just How unpack, that? continue to move forward. Yeah, and I yeah. think that, um, you know, I have been 
serving the Lord for 18 years and probably 15 years of that has been just works based, just wow. doing things and thinking that's what's going to like bring me to this next level mm-hmm. in God. And, and, and I've, I've experienced the contamination. I've experienced right. the bitterness. I've, con- right. I've experienced the lack of joy, right. um, you know, and trying to get that quiet time with God and feeling it just almost a, a waste of time, sadly. And, you know, you can get to a place where you can fake it, right? You know, you say the right words, right. you know, you bring the right, you know, you know energy with you. Um, but the truth is, is that we are, you know, just, we're so dependent on the, the external things that our ability to abide in God, mm-hmm. our ability to rest in Him yeah. um, is diminished. Right. It's diminished. Right. And so, you know, for the last three years we've been really digging into the gospel and for me that has been so impactful because it instead of me trying to get in more prayer time it's become really about the why why don't I have love why don't I want to pray why don't I make time why don't I have this burning desire in light of all that God Mm. has done and he continues to do for me and for my family you know and, so um, and so just being able to receive what he's done for me and allowing love to come from that place mm. that will drive my prayer life. You know, I remember I had this weird, you know, superstitious kind of yeah, talk uh, about connection between yeah. like the situations of life and my prayer life. You know, mm. you know, I would say like our second miscarriage, mm. you know, I remember, you know, reflecting in my journal that if I had prayed more, wow. if I had wow. spent more time seeking after God, if I had you know, been more hungry for God, that this wouldn't have happened. So it's almost as if God was punishing you with a miscarriage because you weren't praying, reading your Bible. Wow, that's, I mean, you, that's, you say that heavy. and I see it, but at the no, time right, it was this heavy. thing like, I didn't think of it as punishment, and it, but that's really many, what's coming out. How many people words. are watching right now that are attributing their crisis and things that are going on as punishment because they're not quote unquote good in such a works law based understanding. Right. That's just incredible. Right. Um, right. Right. And I, I mean, if I could talk to the ladies, you know, or even the men, you know, I don't want to segregate anyone. It's just to know that, you know, your blessings or even the, 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 the bad things that happen aren't connected to how much prayer time you've had or how much devotion you have with Christ. You know, he's, he died for you before you even knew him. Yeah. So that tells me that what he's done for me isn't dictated on my ability to pray right. or be hungry right. enough to find prayer time with him. I just know that there's a blessing in that abide right. that I miss yeah. when I'm more focused on making things happen right. that he will generate naturally as I seek him. Yeah, no, that's so good. And I wish I could stay here forever, but we yeah. got to go. Yeah. I want to read this quote uh, that Pete Scazzaro said about abiding. I don't just read the Bible and do spiritual practices because I have to in order to be a good Christian. The goal of these practices, loving union, the goal is Jesus himself. Yeah. And so a lot of you out there are like, well, I don't have time to do the scriptures and read and pray. Well, you want to know why? It's because you have looked at reading the scriptures, praying. You look at it as just another work to right. add to your schedule right. versus not saying, man, I need this. Yeah. Like I, I need to be in loving union with Jesus because from that, everything flows. Yeah. And uh, I wish we could unpack that more, but we got it. We, what I want to do right now to kind of finish this off and conclude today mm-hmm is uh, there might be some people saying, man, this is all good, like theoretical stuff. Thank you for sharing your story practically, but what can I do tomorrow? How can I wake up tomorrow and change my schedule? Like what, what are some practical things that I can start doing now uh, 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 to change the way that I see my abiding, my stopping? Uh, uh, and so what I do, want, I want to read this. Uh, when we skim in our relationship with God, no program can substitute for the superficiality and self-will that inevitably follows. Yeah. Work that is not nourished by a deep interior life with God will eventually become contaminated. So wow. for those watching, we're going to have to do this really quickly. Okay. Uh, uh, why don't you talk, we're going to talk about two things, the Sabbath mm-hmm. and a daily office. These are things right now that if you're watching, you could write these notes down, you can lead today and begin to change your schedule yeah so that the important things are the first things you do and then the urgent things are next. So why don't you talk a little bit about somebody implementing a daily office in their life so that they can learn to slow down. Yeah. 
So I learned this from Peace Cazero. It's called The Daily Office. And it's different than what you would call like a quiet time or a devotional time. It's really um, turning away. So usually we devote, you know, we, we petition God, we are praying. But this is about just being with him. Being with him with no other agenda than just to enjoy his right. presence. Learn to enjoy his right. presence. And this is right? doing daily, right? Right, this is so daily. five steps to that. Mm -hmm. There's five steps. Right, right. So, let, so let's go ahead and jump okay. into this okay. quickly. All right, so there's silence. That's the biggest part of this. This is what makes us different than any other, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, quiet time with the Lord. So this silence is just stepping away from the day. We're talking... He says 20 minutes, but he says start as little as two to 10 minutes of just being quiet. It's no mm, worship being music, still. No, being still, no worship right. music. You're not talking, right. you're, not, you're, not, you're not speaking, you're just quiet. You That's have good. to go into a secluded place and just be quiet before the Lord. Quiet yourself because all day long you're getting right. input, right? Right. So stillness. Stillness. Yes. Breathing, closing your eyes and just being focused on the presence of God. Scripture. So number two is scripture. Number two is, scri is okay. scripture. Thank Sorry, you. I'm going I'm to keep no, it. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate I'm it. I'm keep it, yeah. And so, you know, you can go through Psalms. Just one line. It, it, it isn't about going through the whole scripture and just doing a scripture reading. It's just to say, I'm going to meditate on a verse. Right. And just allow those words to speak to me That's good. in that moment. Uh, the so third, we have stillness. We mm -hmm. have scripture. Number mm -hmm. three. Mm -hmm. Devotion. Yeah. And devotion, that's just, when you've read that scripture, it's just to meditate on how do I experience God's love in this scripture? How do I experience his character? Uh, how does this speak to me? Yeah, so good. So good. Um, the fourth is just reflection about what words stuck out to you. Again, it's getting in touch with what was the inner response you had when you read that scripture. Right. And then you just ended out. The fifth thing is mm. prayer. Right. And basically, you're just praying through what you read. You're just trying to interact with the presence of God during this time. So and good. it's brief. Right. The point is, this is fast. This isn't 30 minutes, an hour. Right. Right. It's, it's, it's meant to be moments that you take during the day just to acknowledge God, just to be still in his presence right. and learn to and just enjoy being with him with right. no words. And so we're trying to honor the time, guys, so yeah. you can see that we're yeah, speeding through this. That. To be honest, this deserves a whole hour. You have to apologize. What I'm saying is you're available. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, also, you can g email us at, at inspiredchurches.com. Right. We can point you to Pete Scazzaro's yes, resources. I know resources. I have more information for you. So right. if you so feel if like you, you want more, right. I got you. And so final thing, and I, I'm going to go really quickly here and we're going to pray, is the Sabbath. Introducing a biblical Sabbath. That might sound old and archaic to some people, but it's actually really powerful. And it's something that I fail at more than I succeed, but it's a beautiful thing. Four principles, I'm going to give them to you quickly. What is a Sabbath? It's basically creating a rhythm yeah. or a 24 hour, on a 24 hour block of, block of time. Pick any day of the week and say, that's going to be my 24 hour Sabbath. For 24 hours, you're going to do four, you're going to apply four principles on that day. Yeah. So you're going to pick a day and for 24 hours, there are four principles that you're going to follow. Principle number one is stop. Mm. Stop. But I'm going to tell you what, we can't stop unless we trust God. Yeah. And what do I mean by that? So many people think that they have to do all of this stuff. But I'm going to tell you, you can take a 24-hour break. You can take a nap. God is on the throne. Right, He's right. in control. But some yeah. of you feel like you have to take every phone call, right. take every prayer request. That's so good. Jesus <laughs> is ruling and yeah. reigning, not you. Yeah. You can stop for a day and lay down the idolatry of self and lift up God and know that He's taking care of everything. Put your work down. Stop. Number two, rest. What does that mean? Replenish yourself. Here's what I want you to do. Make a list of the things that energize you make a list of things that drain you here are some things that drain you stop working get off of your emails <laughs> don't make text messages in regards to work uh, uh, get, what off do I mean? get off to right uh, uh, get off technology if you have to don't run errands on that day release worry just get rid of all that take away the things that drain you and then add to it things that energize you, you like to nap don't be ashamed. Nap on that day. Uh, enjoy your nap. Ooh. Work out. Some of y'all like to work out. Work out. Take a walk. Go on a hike. Watch a movie. Savor a meal. Go out to eat. Like for that 24 hour time, stop everything that takes away your energy yeah. and do what energizes you. Number two, number three. So stop, rest. Number three is delight. Mm. I love this. I mean, the key word here is play. Play. 
It's okay to have fun. Sabbath is a space where we're commanded to enjoy life, like enjoy the day, savor the moment without having to work, savor the moment without having to rush and be in a hurry. I love this. Every Sabbath also serves as a taste of the glorious eternal party of music, food, and beauty that awaits us in heaven Mm. when we see Jesus. Finally, so stop, rest, delight, contemplate. Take that day to ponder the love of God. Sing worship. Read scripture, enjoy the day, and know that it all flows from Jesus. And I want to conclude with this, and then I'm going to have Jamila pray. The conclusion is this. This is not meant to be an addition to an already busy schedule. It is the resetting of our entire lives towards a new destination, God. It is an entirely new way of being in the world. Babe, would you pray with us? Would you pray for those listening? Yes. We said a lot. We sped up at the end. We need the grace of God (laughs) in this. Um, Go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for this time. And we thank you for this um, book, which you have used as a tool to inspire us, to teach us, to correct us, to mess us up. (laughs) And I thank you for that, God. I thank you that you, you won't let us be satisfied with where we're at. Um, I pray for every person that is listening who will watch. I pray, Father, that you would teach us how to slow down. Give us grace to break away from all the chaos, all the noise, all the distraction, and learn how to just walk in loving union with you. you, Jesus. I pray for um, your will to be done. I pray, God, that this book would continue to impact us, even though this is our last uh, meeting. And I just thank you. Thank you for this opportunity for change, for healing, God. We will be better because you allowed us to start this journey with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Babe, I love you. Love you. (laughs) I love you guys. God bless you. (laughs) Have a wonderful Sunday. Or whenever you're watching this, God bless. (laughs) Pastor Phil. Pastor Jamila, thank you so much. Thank you for being intimate and sharing your hearts and transparency with this church. Ladies and gentlemen, we concluded our sermon series. It has been an amazing time in your book clubs. Be on the lookout for what we got coming next. It's gonna be fire. Miss you all, I love you. If you'd like more information about our church or if this was your first time and wanna get connected, email us at inspiredchurches.com. Have a blessed week. I love you all. Talk to you soon.